Tyndall here on the Boss Man Show. I tell you what, guys, our man Coach Tyndall, he's toughing out with us today. Uh, he's loving the weather, but he's here for us no matter what. That's our guy, Coach Tyndall. Coach Tyndall, I know you're not doing too great. They're going to show you, even though you're not doing too good, man. You got it, guys. You know I want to make you cool. I got that with John. Can you recap this week's uh, standings as we go into these week, this week's games, my brother? Uh, well, last week we had uh, our three games. Michigan State uh, ended up losing uh, JR to Michigan. So uh, we all went chalk on that. We all picked Michigan State. So we took the L on that. Uh, then the next game we had was North Carolina, Notre Dame. And you and I took North Carolina. Coach took Notre Dame which turned out to be a loser. Notre Dame took the L on that one, so Coach dropped a game there. And then the final game, we all picked Kentucky, which was, I believe, JR a winner. And uh, we all picked up a win on that one. So if you, you've got the final tally there, uh, let me know where we stand as far as the record's concerned. Uh, five and four, JR and John. And Coach, tell them four and five. <laughs> mm. yeah, so we, got, we picked well, up I'm a couple still, of them, Coach. I'm, I'm still <laughs> in striking distance, man. I, I can you, always told my team, keep it close, and I'll win it for you the last four minutes. There you okay. go. Be like, like a viper. <laughs> He's ready to strike. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's, that's, that's right. Well, <laughs> this week we have a rematch of SEC football championship game. Georgia and Auburn on the plains of Auburn, Alabama. Uh, Mark Fox is scratching the clock. I'm going to save his job in Georgia. they up at Athens. Bruce Pearl on, on, under a cloud of things being stuff like FBI. In this game right here, guys, just on my relationship with Bruce Pearl, and I'm going to go with him on this. They've been on a high streak here. I feel like playing at home. Joe Auburn fans like all the hype to play Georgia. I feel like at home. This would make a difference for the Auburn Tigers with Bruce Pearl, the coach is put off this year. So I feel like in that regard, we're going to Auburn on my end. I don't know what coach was about the game, but I'll let you guys look at that out from there, from there guys. Well, I'm going to go with you. I, I had a team that he coach Pearl's team work out a couple of days this summer and went down and spent some with them and talked ball. And, and I could tell this was going to be the most talented team that he's had. And those early season distractions certainly concerned everybody, but I think he's handled, it, handled everything phenomenally well. His team is playing hard. They're playing together. I know Georgia's got some heat on them as well, and, and so they're fighting every day like they're literally fighting for their jobs, and, and so they're going to have a sense of urgency as well. But I just think Auburn at home, the way they've been playing, uh, you know, they're all kind of us against the world kind of battle cry, it seems like they're going with them, and it's working, and I think it's going to work against the Bulldogs on Saturday. All right, fellas. Well, I'm going to stick with the two of you. I'm going to pick Auburn as well. Um, so we're going to go chalk on that game now. Game number two, Coach, uh, Tennessee, South Carolina. Uh, volunteers currently looking at uh, 21, uh, 21 ranked in the country. Uh, they've won three of their last five. South Carolina's won um, three of their last five as well, including two in a row uh, coming into this game. So it should be a good matchup. I personally am going to pick the Volunteers on this one. I, I, I like what they've got going on a little more. They're on a hot streak, and I think that they're going to be able to handle South Carolina this week. What say you, Coach? That game is at South Carolina, right, John? Yes, sir. Yep, that, that's the difference for me. I think these are two teams that are very similar, uh, two teams that don't have, you know, the prototypical typical 6'11", 7-foot big guys. They've got some undersized guys. They play extremely hard. I mean, uh, you know, my one year at Tennessee, we went to South Carolina and won uh, with the team we had. It was shocking because I think that South Carolina is always one of the toughest teams in America. And I think their toughness and the fact that they're on the whole, their whole field would be the difference. Because I think these teams are really evenly matched. If you play in the game in Knoxville, I'd probably, you know, go to Tennessee. But I'm going to go with uh, South Carolina and Coach Martin on this one. On the show, uh, I love talking to Coach Martin. He's been sure it's some some heritage for us being from the Caribbean. So uh, I'm definitely gonna go with Coach Martin this week, guys. So John, you enjoy the long wolf taking the Tennessee Volunteers. I want a Tennessee State, John. You should never pick Tennessee or Vanderbilt on this show. <laughs> I know, but I listen. I I don't 
Okay, I'm going to tell you what. Not just for that comment. If my boys pull through this week and I pick up a game on you there, I'm going to rub it in a little bit, all right? Yes. Uh, I got you, John. <laughs> now, the only fantasy school that I will, I will ever not get mad about you picking is MTSU. Because of Coach Davis and how he's been to the show and a good friend of mine. So he's going up to Bowling Green. MTSU's fan at West Kentucky with Stansberry, who won't come on Brent on the show. He wants to put it out there. Brent does not come on the show. So that means just off GP and then after that, Giddy Potts will be on fire this game, I believe. That MTSU and Colt Davis go up to Bowling Green, get that win. Class 65 to 24. If you like my brother's girl on MTS, MSLC Boulevard, having a good victory party and a great weekend. Well, I'm with you, you know, Coach David, my best friend and a, and a mentor of mine, worked for him for five years or uh, four years, I guess, at middle and four at LSU with him, but uh, he does an outstanding job, and, you know, they've dominated that series that is a huge rivalry game to each fan base for a lot of years, you know, and that was probably a big reason that Ray Harper wasn't retained was because Tennessee was going to NCAA tournaments and winning games in Western Kentucky used to do that, but hasn't done it in a while. With that being said, I think that Rick Stansberry has just certainly closed the gap. He's done some really good players that I, that I start. It's in Bowling Green, which is always a tough place to play. But at the end of the day, I think Coach Davis's toughness and grit in, the, in that team takes on the personality of their coach, which is a tough, hard-nosed guy. I'm going to go with the Blue Raiders, even though it's on the road all right fellas well our top threes in the book we got uh three guys picking auburn so we're chalk against georgia there uh two guys picking south carolina i went lone wolf and was maligned for it by jr picking tennessee and then we all picked mtsu rightfully in the final game against western kentucky so it looks like uh we got pretty much squared up as we were last week except i'm the lone wolf this week so we'll see what happens uh, come next week i'm guaranteed to be on top no matter what <laughs> guaranteed yeah. to be on top still <laughs> listen quit yeah. using quit using your math <laughs> skills on us okay jr uh, math okay, which so, all right hey, folks coach get better this, this week man <laughs> oh, hopefully get these wins this week man you can say this week because you and i against john so hopefully get this win this week coach and we'll get back at this week man All right, thanks for having All me. Right, have folks. a great week. Tom Tindall, Lost Man Show. You can't touch this. 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 Hello, my name is Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academics and athleticsconsulting.com. Once again, www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com. Or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L. Williams 24. Or you can call me at 404 542 607. Once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Bossman Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you. Here 
here on the Jared the Boss Man Show with John Beckler. Uh, we have a great guest for you, uh, the coach of the Georgia Southern Eagles down there in Statesboro, a little bit down the road from here. It's from Georgia Southern Coach Mark Byington here on the Boss Man Show. Coach Byington, how are things in Statesboro for you, man? Well, it's a little warmer in Atlanta. We didn't get much snow, but uh, it's good to be in Atlanta. We always love coming down. And coach, I had three inches in my backyard, man. I hated every, every inch of it. <laughs> Yeah, well, half of my team's allergic to snow, so I'm glad we play indoors. Uh, me, me, and you, me too, Coach. I'm a, I'm a Florida boy at heart, so I hate snow. What a patch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, we can indeed. definitely relate. Got half of my team's from there. Yes, indeed. Well, Coach, congrats on your 5-1 and one starting conference play out the Tukey Browns, late jumpers against Appalachian State, Coach. Aside from Tukey's jumpers in the end, Coach, what are the key factors to you guys getting that, getting that game pulled out there at Appalachian State there on this, this past Saturday? Well, there's been some times this year where, you know, luck's gone against us and some times this year where luck went for us. And, you know, we had a chance to put it up three and actually missed a decently easy shot. And then they came down the, down the court and I couldn't control anything and they missed a wide open three and, and a tip in there that wasn't quite easy. But uh, we had a little fortune on our side. And uh, at the, the same time, you know, it's a long season. We're, we're about to hit our 20th game on Saturday. And uh, a couple times this year in, in our five losses, we've had some last-second heartbreakers, but that was one of the um, last-second ones that ended in the right way for us. Now, Coach, uh, you know, as that game played out, you know, coming in and winning that game down the stretch, is that something that you guys emphasize as a staff to the players in, in, is finishing games strong and, and making sure that that's something that's a conversation you have with them you kind of on a weekly basis well, or is it something you touch on periodically? No, we actually do it a lot. We spend a lot of time on situations, and as a coach, you try to let the guys just know what we'll do in that situation. So we, we won't, I won't always have a timeout, or sometimes I'll have a timeout and not choose to use it. But um, even the first game of the year, you know, we went up and beat Wake Forest, and it came down to us you know, get, making some free throws at the end and then having to get a stop at the end to keep them from winning. So we're able to do Wake Forest, and, and we've had them throughout the year. Um, you know, we played Arkansas Little Rock here, and Tukey Brown hit a game-winning three-pointer that that ended the game. And so we in uh, South Alabama, just uh, a week and a half before that, we actually had a chance, a wide-open three to win that game, missed it, but a great execution. So you practice them the best you can. And one thing that helps us right now is I got some guys who played a lot of basketball, our juniors and seniors, and they know what I expect and what to do in the situation. You know, Coach, I, I wanted to kind of – um, drill down a little bit deeper on that point. You know, we saw in this uh, past weekend's uh, NFL playoff games where there, there was that big play in the, the Saints-Vikings game, and the, the, the Saints had a hiccup on defense, and there was some situational unawareness on that play that allowed them to, to lose that game. So it, it's something that can be taken for granted, I suppose, by players. And and how do you get them to, to – without you know being in the situation, how do you get them to – grasp the gravity of it when you're actually in that that situation and and really have them understand it well you need guys who um don't get caught up in the moment but just get caught up in what they're supposed to do and doing their job and you know sometimes people try to do something different and you know, because the clock's going down or, or or whatever might be the situation and you know the the sad thing is is experience is the best teacher at that but sometimes experience you're going to get is going to be a bad result to be able to learn from it and, you know, my guys right now are, you know, I got three juniors that start and then two seniors that start. Well, the, the seniors that started ever since they're freshmen, and so have the juniors. So these guys have started a lot of basketball, but there's been some growing pains. And I, I watched the football game you're talking about, and, and it, it's heartbreaking as a coach and as a player, you know, to, to go ahead and go through however long the game is and to have one play be the talking point of the game or the starting point of the game, um, whether it be a missed field goal kick or – you know, a missed tackle or, or on the other end, you know, you want to work on the positive situations where this is what we do and this is how we handle things. And and one thing I emphasize to our guys that we're not going to worry about the result. We're just going to do what's right and live with the result. So if we take the right shot or make the right defense to play and, and they do something that's, that's great, you know, you know, take your hat off to them and move on. But you want to make sure you do what's right and put yourself in the best opportunity to win those games. We're joined by Mark Bonson here on the Boston Man Show from Georgia State Southern. The Eagles will be in Atlanta and Georgia State this weekend playing the Georgia State Panthers. Come out and see the game, folks. It's going to be a big game. Georgia State, Georgia Southern. The two GSUs, guys. State versus Southern. Come see them play this weekend. Now, Coach, 
I know a lot of teams in non-conference slate hates playing Georgia State due to the myriad of zones Ron Hunter employs. So how helpful has it been to you and your staff that you have a full week to prepare for them, him and all his zones that he plays? Well, you know, their zone is, you know, it's unique, and it, it is one of the best you see in the country. Um, they give you a couple of different looks and have some adjustments to it. And, and you know, the only thing that ever helps us out is, you know, we, we've had some guys on our team go against it before, but they're so good at adjusting. Sometimes as soon as you kind of find a crack in it, they'll fix it and they make you have to go to something else. So it's um it, it's a very good defense. And, you know, we played them at home last year, and, and we were able to make a lot of shots and do some great things against it. And then we, we actually played them in the, in the Sun Belt Championship game, and it was 38-36, and neither team could score on each other, and their zone was great that day. So it, it is a bear. Um, you like to prepare for it, but you don't want to overthink it. But um, it is one of the more unique and tougher defenses you go through throughout the year. So, Coach, we touched on uh, Tookie Brown a little bit previously in the interview, and I, I'm just curious to know how big has he been for you this season uh, averaging 18 points a game, about four boards and assists per game. What has it meant uh, to the team to have him playing at a high level? Well, you know, he's done it for ever since he's gotten here. You know, as a freshman, he was the first team all-conference point guard. And as a sophomore, did the same type deal. And now as a junior, the difference is, is not so much just his play and all he's doing, but it's his demeanor and what he's um, able to help the guys around him do. So his, his leadership role and his his ownership of the team is at another level right now because even when he got here, almost the first or second game of the year, his freshman year, he was already good, but he just knew how to be good kind of within himself and his kind of box. But but now he's expanded to making other guys better. And, Coach, also evaluating your team stats, Coach, I see it jumped off the page to me. You balance scoring, balance re- rebound just off the, off the page at me real, real big. So, Coach, is sharing the basketball, attacking the glass, two elements to your staff really hone down with the guys to be focusing on throughout every game this season? Well, we did spend a lot of time in our kind of like summer development and then emphasis was um, on three things that you mentioned, two of them. It was, it was rebounding, it was defense, and it was toughness. And, you know, we got off to a great start last year. We were 7-0 and in the league and then hit a tough stretch down the end where, you know, those three things didn't show. We weren't always tough. We didn't always rebound. We didn't always play defense. And right now we're leading the Sun Belt in defensive um, field goal percentage defense and, and three-point field goal percentage defense. And, and we're much better on rebounding. But, um, you know, one thing that we've, you know, talked to our team about is the last couple times that we've been at Georgia State, They've dominated us in rebounding, so we can't let that happen again because the last two years we've lost in overtime and in a game that was a possession game towards the end of it, and I think rebounding was a big part of it. Coach, I just wanted to drill down a little bit into that and, and how you get um, how you get the result from your players, you know, like specifically on the glass. We have uh, a lot of you know young coaches that listen to the program, uh, whether it be in high school, AAU, what have you. Uh, for them, how do you – get your players uh you know to, to be strong on the glass what are some of the things that you emphasize and how have you had success in doing that that maybe they can use and translate into their own programs well you know sometimes there's you know when you're a coach and you don't have this i can't afford this when you're at high school but sometimes you recruit guys who have a natural instinct for rebounding and guys who know where the ball is going to go or, or that are physical that have good hands and then other times you know you got to build a team up with technique and I think the best rebounding teams in the country, you know, kind of have a mixture of, of, of the technique. And then you, you got some natural guys who can go get the ball out of their area. Um, we, we don't have those guys that are out of area rebounds. So we've had to be much better at technique and making sure we box out and check out every time the ball goes up. Now, Coach, I just wanted to, to get a little bit of uh, insight from you on the, the quality of teams and coaching in the league. Uh, so the Sunbelt Conference may not be a conference that a lot of people are familiar with. JR and I are, our listenership is to a degree. So what's your feeling on the quality of play, um, the, the coaching in the league, and, and how you guys fit into that mix and presenting the quality product that we see uh, week in and week out? Well, you know, I think you mentioned it. it it's underrated. You know, last year there, there's 32 Division One conferences, and it was ranked the 13th conference out of 32. And, you know, there's been some our, – our league's been – you know, guys been going in the NBA and being successful out of our league. And, and also, you've seen in the NCAA tournament, you know, Georgia State goes in and, 
and, and they get an NCAA tournament win. The Arkansas Little Rock, um, you know, the year after that goes in and gets an NCAA tournament win. And so you, you've seen that with guys winning out of conference games against Power 5 schools and doing that. But um, in, until, until you get two teams in the NCAA tournament, that's usually when the respect changes. Um, and we're searching for that. And, and guys got to win enough games non-conference and then kind of handle business in conference. But that's always a challenge for a league like ours because it's much better than, than sometimes people know represented. And, and if, if, if you're interested, go watch one of these games close up and you'll see the athleticism and, and these, you know, these other teams got great coaches and then do things. So it's not easy. Uh, but, um, it, you know, it's, I like everybody else. They always say the tough league to win is the one you're in. Well, you know, some it's really hard to win in. It's, it's a challenge every single night. And, Coach, how does it make you feel knowing every senior has graduated since you took over at Georgia Southern in 2013? How does it make you feel as being the head coach of the program and knowing the guys that come through your program these past few years that you've been there? Well, it's important to me. You know, I was raised with an educational background. My mom's elementary school principal and my brother's professor. And, you know, I, before I kind of decided I wanted to be a college basketball coach, so I thought my career path was going to be a teacher and, and my college professor myself. And I just missed basketball too much. But I, I want guys to leave, you know, our program. And, you know, they can make all the jump shots they want and do all the things they want to do there. But the bigger picture is, you know, I want them to be able to do something when basketball is over for them. And um, that's been implemented to me. It's important of education, what you can away from it, the door to open for you. And so we spend a lot of time in our program emphasizing that and then also the life skills that they're going to need to kind of be successful once the ball does stop bouncing. And, Coach, it must be helpful for you when you go to recruit kids at Georgia Southern that, hey, you can, you can touch your record of how all my, sen- all my seniors graduate. That I don't have seniors who don't get – I get your your son of the degree. He comes to play for me. So it has to help you re- in recruiting a lot when you're talking to these f- families and parents. Yeah, you know, you get the, you get the types of families a lot of times where, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll want you to talk about education, and then, then it kind of switches over to basketball and – and the only promises I ever make, I never make a promise to a parent or a kid that you're going to come in and start or play or do that. But we do come in when they tell them, when we tell them that we're going to be sure that they're going to graduate. And that's something we're going to stay on and we're never going to leave one behind or let one not do it, that, that we'll take away basketball from them. And we've had to do that before just to make sure that, that their priorities are in order. And then once their priorities are in order, then the basketball takes care of itself. Well, Coach Bonson, you've been great there on the show. We kept a little longer than we usually do, but you've been so good. We wanted to definitely talk to you some more, man. You, we Coach, we look forward to seeing you on Saturday at the game here. Wish you all, all the best of luck up there at Georgia State on Saturday. Look forward to seeing you Saturday, man, at Georgia Sports Arena. Yeah, thanks. Should be a fun game. Appreciate you guys having me on. All right, folks. It's Mark Bonson on the Boss Man Show. Fantasy football season is fast approaching, and if you're looking for an edge this season, you need to contact the guys at Draft Day Consultants. The concept is a simple one. Draft Day Consultants takes your requests and connects you with one of their trusted analysts, who then guide you through your draft, whether you just need a sounding board on decisions or if you need them to conduct your entire draft. Draft Day Consultants has you covered. Every one of their consultants has a proven track record of success and have conducted hundreds, even thousands of mock drafts. Thanks to this year-round research and analysis, the guys at DDC have an unmatched understanding of player values. So gain an edge on your league mates this season by hitting up DraftDayConsultants.com. That's www.draftdayconsultants.com. Now get after it, fantasy footballers. Yeah, yeah, it's your man, JC, the host with the most, baby. And it goes down each and every Saturday night right here in the city of Memphis. That's right, y'all. It goes down at Clicks Sports Bar Memphis, baby. 3705 Malco Way, Memphis, Tennessee, 38125. Come out and join us, the Three Kings, each and every Saturday night for the liveest karaoke in the city. Everybody gets in free till 10 p.m., only $5 after. Great food. We got drink specials. We got all kind of games, man. We got the pool tables popping. Whatever you want, we got you, man. Come on out. Have a good time with us each and every Saturday night. That's Clicks Sports Bar, Memphis.
Boss Man Show in the season of reviews, previews, and recaps. So, since it's, we're in mid-January here, and now we're heading towards the NBA All-Star break, over 40 games for most teams in the league. So, let's talk about the East Conference's mid-season review right now, or recap. I want to look at it. Uh, and right now, the Eastern Conference, John, if the playoffs ended this weekend, we have the playoffs in Boston at Toronto, Cleveland, Miami, Washington, the Pacers, Milwaukee, and Detroit. But not far off is Philadelphia, the Knicks, and the and the Hornets. Even the Bulls are kind of in touch distance of the eighth playoff spot in the Eastern Conference, John. So just off of that alone, just those teams and seeing where how the Kyrie Irving trades kind of helped out Boston. Toronto's got younger and is playing more open. Cleveland's gotten older and you have LeBron James kind of chirping about how challenging he is. Miami's still been saw Eric Spolster, Washington Wizards up and down as always. Indiana won eight, McMillan lose after losing Paul George still in the mix. Milwaukee, Jason Kidd always in the mix as well. And the Pistons under my man Stan Van Gunder, a.k.a. Ron Jeremy doing his thing in the Pistons. Well, the, the thing that jumps out at me the most is um, the Knicks, okay? So the Knicks, Sixers, and Pistons are all kind of going to be fighting for that last spot. I feel like the Bucks and the Pacers will end up kind of separating themselves out into that 6-7 area. So to me, the first 6-7 teams are kind of set for the playoffs, and you've got the Knicks, Sixers, and Pistons kind of fighting for that last 8th spot, potentially 7th spot, depending on what happens. You know, the, the, the Bucks could falter and then kind of come back to the pack a little bit, but... Um, I, I'm surprised personally by the Knicks, and I want to get your feel. We'll have to get the bone on to see what he thinks about the the season they're having here, as we get a little bit uh, further along in the in the uh, campaign to see what he thinks about the Knicks. But uh, where do you see them coming out? Do you think that they're going to be able to kind of push closer to 500 and then keep it there, or do you think that they're going to kind of fade back a little bit? This is going to fade back. The Knicks are out of the talent right now. The Knicks have a scrappy roster. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. plays for the Knicks, who played with Atlanta Hawks for all those years. Courtney Lee is up there. Kylo Quinn may get traded. He's in the inspiring contract. Also, you have uh, guys like, you know, uh, Ron Baker come off the bench as well. Michael Beasley and Lance Thomas are platooning, John. And uh, Michael Beasley can score the best of them, but Jeff Hornacek wants to go with defense and Lance Thomas, which is taking scoring off the floor and Michael Beasley. So you have that going with the Knicks. I think the Knicks are a mixed match roster. Uh, Steve Mills and Scott Perry, the GM and president, have to do a better job of improving that roster around Chris Dallas Porzingis. Now, it was a lot of flat giving Tim Hardaway Jr. getting that big contract. Four years of $71 million. million. Uh, Timmy has done his job for the most part, but Jared Jack, the former Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, on, on the roster as well. You got him up there playing well for the Knicks. They just signed Trey Burke, guard from Michigan. Uh, so the Knicks, to me, are just trying to scrap along and try to make it. And if, if Jerry Jack is starting point guard, that's pretty not good. I mean, Jerry Jack's not a bad player, but that 34 years old, he shouldn't be your point guard. Come on, knee injuries. That's, just, that's, just, that's just my view of it, John. All right. Well, so then <clears throat> creeping up the list there, where do you see – um, where do you see it playing out from six through eight? Let's start. Let's start there. Six through eight. We'll say the Wizards. Um, we'll put them out of the mix for now, just for the sake of conversation. So six through eight. Where do you think that? Actually, changes? they look. At, see, when look at the loss column. They're all kind of jumbled up together, and you know it's even how Philadelphia has less losses than Detroit and Milwaukee does. So I feel like because Robert Covington's my dude, I want him to get in the playoffs. Philadelphia's sake, but I just feel like Milwaukee's trying to find a big man on the trade market, trying to get a big man like DeAndre Jordan, but they want to keep on giving up draft picks to bring in guys. They're barring Eric Bledsoe from Phoenix to be the point guard. The Bucks have a lot of guys of the same size and interchangeable. Thon Maker, Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak. You have him out there. You have Tony Snell. You have a lot of guys of the same height and the same skill sets. They need a rim protector, a rim stopper. I think DeAndre Jordan would help them push on the top. The Pistons, you look at the Pistons, John. They lost Reggie Jackson against an injury, so they can't keep him healthy. Ish Smith is just now running the show in Detroit. So Detroit's being killed by injuries, uh, and that's what's killed them all these years. Reggie Jackson can't stay healthy. Uh, Indiana, 
I'm just surprised Victor Oladipo and Sabonis is playing as well after they traded away Paul George. And but leading right there, Paul George, they have a lot more ball movement and player movement now. Nate McMillan is actually playing fast. I mean, Nate McMillan is one of them slow it down kind of a guys on the, on offense and defense when he put pull in Seattle. So he's reinventing himself now as he's gotten to Indiana to become their head coach. So looking at these, looking at this, looking at it, man, I, I just. I think the young Sixers will falter eventually, and the Knicks won't catch up. So I think, as we're saying now, the pace of Indiana and Detroit, well, Milwaukee and Detroit, they they will get in there. It's just a matter of between the Wizards and uh, and also the Miami. It just kind of depends on how it all shakes out after the All-Star break for his wins and losses. So somebody gets hot, they can, they can be in the, up to the fourth seed even, or the three seed. Cleveland's not playing that well right now. I think in the Eastern Conference you have John – Boston and Toronto are going to be one and two probably most likely. Unless Cleveland gets hot. I don't see Miami. They lost Deion Warriors for the whole year. Dang, ankle injury. I don't see Miami really being jumping up and going on a big streak. They'll probably win three or four here and lose a couple here. They kind of team that kind of wins the one more than they lose. Keeps it going all year long. So I see Miami's roster. Washington Wizards don't have a bench, man. Their bench is god awful. And that's the problem. When Scott goes to his bench, they just falter. They've signed Mike Scott. They brought in Jody Meeks. They brought in guys for their bench, but none, none's working right. None sticks. None sticking. So I just feel like the Eastern Conference. Uh, once you get below Cleveland, they just pretty much, you know, feeding. Uh, they pretty much feed for for the top three teams in the conference. If you ask me, so it really wouldn't matter per se. But if it's someone wants to play, I'll make a trade and do it. But the problem, John, is this. a lot of the cap room this summer won't be there because they went so crazy last offseason. So it's not going to be that money on the open market for guys. So do, do you, do you want to be a buyer or do you want to be a seller? Do you want to, you know, go out there and pawn off an asset of second round or first round pick for a guy that may not help you, won't help you beat Cleveland, won't help you beat Boston or Toronto in the Eastern Conference? So that's what GMs have to weigh right now, uh, the risk and reward of just trying to, be a playoff playoff seed, or not realistically knowing you can't win anything. So, so let me ask you this: before we get into the breaking down the the top three teams in the East, do you think that the the <clears throat> disparity in the level of uh, whether it be talent or, or, or play um, between the top three and the rest of the East is indicative of? Uh, I guess what what is it indicative of? Is it is it all these? Uh, you know, super teams that have been being formed over the course of the past, you know, four, five, six, seven years. Is it a uh, drop off in talent coming into the league or the, the, that talent coming into the league too early, not being ready, needing time to develop? Where do you point to to kind of uh, identify the reason that because basically right now, Jr. you know, you and I consider and look at this and say, OK, well, it's going to be the Celtics Raptors Cavs in, in the Eastern Conference Finals. You know th- those three teams pick your two. Everybody else is kind of just an, an afterthought at this point. It's, it's salary cap, and it's the way teams manage themselves. Think about the Washington Wizards. If you're capped out, I don't know if we can get deep into the cap right here, but if you're capped out, the Wizards are. Otto Porter's offered a max deal. Does Otto Porter really change the needle for you? You know what I'm saying? So you have yeah. you having to pay guys just to pay guys because you can't replace them. So like right. my the Miami Heat, Deion Waiters, if they're overpaying to keep him, James Johnson, Goran Dragic, those guys are gonna make you beat Toronto, Boston, or Cleveland. But you have to over you have to pay them because you can't replace them because you're you're capped out. So the salary cap rules of the NBA kind of force you to, to overpay to keep guys because if you, you lose them, you're gonna be tanking. Like let's just be honest, Atlanta Hawks they're rebuilding and tanking. Orlando Magic is rebuilding and tanking. So is Brooklyn. So is sh- sh- Chicago. Now, Charlotte's supposed to be trying to, to com- contend for something. So th- they have no excuse. But it's just like that when, you, when you're capped out, you can't sign for agents. All you have is a mid- mid-level exception to bring guys in. So you have to kind of overpay your own to stay halfway relevant, which pushed you in a, a purgatory, which means you're not you're not enough to, to get a high pick you're not good enough to win anything. So a lot of teams in the Eastern Conference are stuck in NBA pur- pur- purgatory. They're not rebuilding and they're not contending. So they're just kind of in the middle there. 
And the worst place you want to be in the NBA is stuck in the middle. Because on a seven game series you can't win. Yeah, and then look just you know, looking at the top three teams now, let's get into that a little bit, JR. So you've got the the Celtics Raptors have kind of so risen a little bit above the Cavaliers. As you said, the Cavaliers are struggling a little bit right now. You know, which it's it's weird to me they've been hot and cold. So that you know, um coming at out of the, the, the Christmas season in, into the beginning of January, they weren't playing too poorly. They, they had strung together, I believe, like seven wins out of nine or something along those lines in a stretch there, and now they're on the flip side of that. So, you know, what team are you going to get down the stretch? Now, it's tough to bet against LeBron James, but does he have enough left in the tank to carry a team? You know, he, he's he's done that before, but as a much younger man. So it's, it's hard to doubt him based on his track record, but at the same time, you know, when, when does that – um, abilities start to, to wear off a little bit in terms of being able to put a team on your back for an entire stretch run of the season and into the postseason. Yeah, for, for all times, there is no one. It's coming. Wilson, it's what happened to LeBron's on some come so fast, he don't, he don't realize he hit him. So it's going to hit him like a ton of bricks. That's the thing about it, what's going to happen. And this is Cleveland's last year to contend. I think he's out of Cleveland. I, I know people say he may stay. Look at the roster. Why do he stay there? And you're capped. You have no assets. You can't really change the roster. So I think he's out of there. Based on just the roster alone and the assets they have to get better, that he, that he's out of there. Yeah, and then, and then to, to dovetail off of that base, you know, do, do you want to stay in a situation where you have to put in max and, – and this is not to you know, say that he doesn't or won't, but put in max effort every night just to keep – the, the team on top, you know, as opposed to going to a team where you can lighten your load a little bit, still contend, you can take nights off. The NBA is a grind, man. It's a long season. When you say guys take nights off, it's not uh, a knock against them. You've got to, to, to maintain your body. You've got to be able to take nights off here and there, whether it means you're on the court kind of taking it easy, taking a night off, quote unquote, or literally on the bench taking a night off. You know, he might be better served to, to look for a situation like that where he's not, you know, he may be top billing. But he's not carrying the entire load, you know. Watch out for Philadelphia. That could be a spot for him. They're young and up and coming. They need a spark. Philadelphia could be a LeBron James man in the spot. I know it's not, not we're talking about this show. I'm just throwing it out there. It could be a LeBron in the spot, Philadelphia. All right. Well, hit me up with the Celtics real quick. I'm not, frankly, I mean, I, yeah, the Raptors are there. I mean, if you ask me, my personal opinion, it's going to come down to, to Cleveland and Boston. I think the Raptors will will definitely be a force, obviously, as the season goes on. But once playoff time also comes, lucky. They, if they say number one seed, they can avoid them to the conference final. Who they, they pretty much get the leftovers of Cleveland and Toronto. Correct. So Boston a good spot. Kyrie Evans really balling the Brad Stevens system. Al Horford is playing the four, not the five, and you know you have roster balance with Boston right now. Also, guys knowing their roles, and it's not so much the based behind one dude who's five foot nothing. So, balls have a chance, and Kyrie Irving is flourishing in the new environment, which is the chagrin of LeBron James. So, I feel like the Boston Celtics will probably come out of the East. They'll probably beat the Cavs in six games and go play Golden State in the finals, which which we'll talk about later with Golden State in the, in the Western Conference. But I feel like, the, the, as we said in the day, I look at the Boston being come out of the East. Because we're still assuming that the, if the Cavs and the Raptors are a matchup, either in the final, the Eastern Conference Finals or prior to that, the Cavs still have the Raptors number, correct? Yeah, the Raptors, they, they, they're in their heads. Right. So, yeah, and that's the Eastern Conference preview, people. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. We'll holler at you after the break. Kane is in the building, Nick. All your photo, video, and voiceover needs, check out the fine folks at Blu-ray Productions. They will take good care of you. If you don't believe me, you can see for yourself. Check out their work at blueberryproductions.tv, the Facebook page, Blueberry Productions, also a Vimeo page, a YouTube page, and it's Blueberry, B-L-U-B-E-R-R-Y, prod on Twitter. Check them out today. Blueberry Productions, great people, great work, great service. 
A gorgeous tan from Suntan City gives you an inner glow that relights the fire when you run into your first crush. Vicky, who is that? An old boyfriend. Lucky you just tanned at Suntan City. Lucky he's single. We're doing lunch tomorrow. Won't be single for long then. During Tour of the City, try all five tans, including spray tan, for just $4.99. Restrictions may apply. Click to buy now. Hip hop fans, I got a great album for you. The debut album from Family Grind ENT, True Speech, and 313 Fresh. We're going to give you two discs, 33 songs of pure, genuine hip hop. Albums available on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, illstreetrex.com, and streaming live right now on Rhapsody, Beats Music, Spotify, Xbox Music, Slacker Radio, and SoundCloud. Check them out today. True Speech and 313 Fresh, Family Grind ENT. Believe in it. Get it. Hello, college basketball fans. This is Donnie Tyndall, former head basketball coach, and we're getting ready to have a top three with Tyndall with JR the boss man and John, myself, as we analyze the college basketball season team by team, break down stats and facts, and give you all the basketball scoop across the country on a weekly basis. We hope you'll join us and look forward to talking hoops with you on the boss man show. Time for your Western Conference season mid-season review here on the Boss Man Show. Now, John, looking at the Western Conference, it's a nine-team race already, man. And you got six tankers and nine (laughs) contenders in the Western Conference. (laughs) The tankers are out in force in the West, bro. Boy, Sacramento, Dallas, the Lakers, we know why they're tanking. Uh, Memphis, <laughs> Phoenix, and the Utah Jazz. You know, like, man, like, these teams should be in the playoffs all the time. Now, now they're just stuck in that tank mode with Atlanta, Orlando, and Chicago, and Brooklyn. Yeah, like, so, if you would have, and I just started to jump you, but if you told me, even like, say, what, three years ago, four years ago, if I would have told you, oh, in a few years, the, the Grizzlies, Lakers, and Mavericks would all be cellar dwellers. You'd have laughed at me, right? Yes. And the Tankers Paradise is coming up this weekend with Zach Randolph returning to Memphis, Sacramento and Memphis. That's the Tankers Paradise. <laughs> Been spending most of our life living in the Tankers Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Taking in the money. Young players in power. Picks after picks, they sour, sour, sour. <laughs> well, listen, let's <laughs> listen. I don't want to stop you from singing because God knows you know how I love when you sing. But let's <laughs> dig into this. Uh, let's say let's go six through nine: Pelicans, Clippers, Blazers, Nuggets. So first of all, I have to tell you that the longer that I see the Pelicans name out there, it's the worst. How could you ever name a pro sports team the Pelicans, right? Exactly. I'm sorry, but I'm just I'm sorry you could come or with the something. Thunder, white. What? At least, at least the, I mean, the Thunder is like it's got a little power behind Pelicans. Come on, Pelicans. Come on. Yes. I mean, so. Yes. And just, just FYI, there's no jazz in Utah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there's no jazz in Utah. I've never heard jazz in Utah ever. Right. Be honest. <laughs> uh, I'm just being real. I mean, like, it's like I feel you. Yeah, the Pelicans, that name has got awful. And this is the kid, the Pelicans, John. Do you keep the Brow and DeMarcus Cousins happy? How do you keep those two happy? I don't know. I just I, – I'm not sure. I, when I look at this, I sit here and I see a lot, I see a lot of parity in the, in the second half of these uh, Western Conference standings. So Pelicans, Clippers, Blazers, Nuggets. Who really there's, – there's, that's the sacrificial lamb. Nobody in that group is going gonna, is gonna to step up in the first round and knock off one of the top four, right? You're right. But I will I wouldn't mind seeing Houston beat the Clippers first round. That would be great for entertainment purposes. Yeah, that would be good. 
Because I also want to see if they fight in the, in the playoffs, so they do do like like right now. So we're looking for a two seven matchup. So we're looking for a Rockets. Because let's be honest here, the Rockets ain't. I mean, the Warriors are going to finish number one. They're heads and tails above everybody else. So the the Rockets and the Clippers, they need to hold the, hold it down where they're at right now, so we can get a like a series long yes. uh, mini. It'll be like a mini series, like a like a made for TV mini series, right? Yes. The only team that get them trouble, and that's just on paper, is the Pelicans because of their size, with Cousins and Anthony Davis. The Warriors will not want to play the Pelicans. That's one match where they wouldn't want to play because they don't have the size to compete with Davis and Cousins. Because that, that means you have to go play Zaza Pachulia or JaVale McGee. Yeah, but it would, I mean, it would be tough for them, you know, over a, a five-game series, uh, series. But, I, I mean... Yeah. Defensively, I would say defensively, it would be kind of messed awkward. up. It would be awkward for them. To, that matchup would be awkward. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah, that that, that, would, that would kind of throw them off to say, like, "Hey, let me, let me do this." Nah, let's not do that. Not a good idea. Not a good idea there. So, Portland, Denver, Clippers, Pelicans. Denver is about Paul Millsap right now, so that helps. That they're not they're staying they're staying tough with Paul Millsap being out. So, Denver could get him back. Then he they could give going to run with them. But also, what's funny about this is that any one of these five teams, OKC, New Orleans, the Clippers, Portland, and Denver can get that five to eight seed. Somebody somebody gonna be on the outside look, looking in. If you that, ask me, that's what I was just Portland, gonna ask you. Yep, I was just gonna ask you who you think is gonna be the the the, the, the outs the out uh, you know the person left without a chair. Portland maybe it'll be Portland or Denver. The Clippers have guys that set out the cellar. They, they they're playing with G, G, G League guys, Coach that house kind of guys, and they're still sort of there. Now, they this is also interesting. That three four matchup, the Spurs or the, the Timberwolves, that's going to be a battle for, for number three. I mean, if it was me, I want the three seed, not the four seed. I try to avoid Golden State as long as I can. You know, that's just my thinking about that. Now, it then now seeing a Timberwolves Thunder four or five series would be interesting. See if Tom Thibodeau can get those guys to play defense in Minnesota. You know, I think that'd be interesting as well. Uh, the Golden State, John, I'm gonna tell you this right now. They have to have to be cognizant of their, of their losses or what they contract because to get to get this. Boston, each college, is, is only two games behind in the lost column for his best record. And they're going to want home court in the finals of this Boston. So you have to be careful about not losing track of that and not being lapsed, having lapsed about getting the best record when it comes time for the, for, for the finals. Yeah, and, and I, I just, you know, and the Warriors are a great team, but they also have to recognize that, you know, they – the book is kind of out on them. The, the Cavs kind of put the book, you know, kind of put their business out there, so to speak. You know, so if you can <laughs> play the same type of ball that the Cavs played against them over the course of the past few years in the finals, then, you know, there there's a roadmap out there, right? Yeah. But everybody don't have the uh, yeah, I'm, great LeBron James to... And, and I get that part of it, but, you know, as long as you're, you're, you're taking that... Uh, approach, even though you might not have the talent, mm-hmm. it's there. You know, th- it's there to be had, right? Yeah, it's definitely to be had. Definitely, most definitely, most definitely already had. So, Houston, don't 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 they 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 can out Golden State, Golden State. Only they can do it. Yeah. I just don't. I don't see it. I don't see it. I agree with you. If, but if we were models of the old, remember the old Mavs Kings playoff series? It would be like one forty two to one four to one thirty in playoff yeah. games. <laughs> right, it'd be like an all star game score. No D at all. One seventy five to one seventy four. Exactly. No overtime. <laughs> no overtime. Just straight up down the court, running down the court. So there'll be no defense being played. You know. You know what? 
Why did Mike D'Antoni shoot off uh, off his cool porn stash? Why did he do that? I don't know, man. I don't know. This is cool porn stash. It kind of freaks me out seeing him now, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I just see that San Antonio to me. They like Kawhi Leonard has been hurt all year long, and they're a year older. I mean, can you? They keep up with Golden State. Can they keep up with Houston and running with them up and down the floor? I, I think that San Antonio, they they could <clears throat> they could challenge, but they need some help. They need it. They need like they would need like an injury to slow somebody down. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They, it, it's not going to happen uh, straight up. And that's not to disparage the Spurs. Obviously, you know they've got uh, you know talent and and they've been there. They've got the longevity. But you know as time goes on, you you need a little help. Everybody needs a little help. But when you're trying to take down you know number one, the, the young guns, guys got talent that can run up and down the court. You know if you can get a little help and slowing them down, then you know more power to you it's just gonna help you out exactly i just don't see it and i'm not scared about minnesota johns this tom thibodeau likes to wear his guys out he's the reason derrick rose burnt out he's the reason joking no one needs are, are, are done he caused caused boozer to go down fast because thibodeau don't use his bench he runs you runs you into the ground might be about 18 still playing starters out there in the fourth quarter with two minutes to go right that's how Derrick Rose got hurt the first time. Yeah, and see, that's you know that goes back to what we were saying about LeBron in the in the Eastern Conference segment is you know he 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 can't continue to do that. Like he's played a lot of minutes in his career, bro. Like I mean, mm-hmm. he he played a lot of minutes when he was coming up. You know, he he was what twenty years old carrying a team on his back in the playoffs. Exactly. You know, playing fifty minutes a night sometimes. You know, more than that if they were you know in OT and then whatnot. So that's a serious issue once you get into playoff basketball, especially when you're contending to, to try to stay in the hunt as the Timberwolves are. If you, if you got your guys wearing down 40, 50 games into the season and you got to start giving guys nights off because of the, the toll that the, the first part of the season is taking on their body, then you're going to have no gas left in the tank once playoff time comes. Yeah. And you know what else, you know what, you know what else is happening too? That, Tom Thibodeau still has long practices. Two, three hour practices. Because, I mean, like, dude, you're running these young dudes out. Like, you're going to run these dudes, kill, take time off their back in their careers because you just don't know how to chill. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wiggins mixing. and Carlton Town should be like, I'll get me away from this dude. Like, mix in a walkthrough once in a while, right? <laughs> yes. Because I'm like, now think about those, all those old Bulls people. They're all ran to the ground. Wrecked. Like, he screwed up. Like, if I'm Derrick Rose, I'll, I'll see him like, when, the, when the Hawks play the Cavaliers February 9th. Derrick Rose, I'm say, bro, you know why you ain't been healthy all these years? Tom Simple will ring to the ground. I'm going to tell him that. He'll say, yep. <laughs> I'm going to tell him. I feel like dude ring to the I think it's his fault. It's not you. It's him. He didn't know how to chill. <laughs> All right, well, listen, let's tie this thing off real quick, okay? So we are in agreement that the Warriors are going to finish top top billing, right? Yes. Rockets more than likely are going to come out two, and the Spurs are probably – they're probably battling it out. Spurs, Rockets, two, three. But more than likely, we're set with the top three, right, where they are right now? Yeah. I'm pretty, Minnesota looks like it's pulling away from, from that five to eight group or five, five to nine group. So, yeah. I, so basic, basically we're with, saying – Yeah. Go ahead. I'm good with it being – Minnesota, Golden State, San Antonio, and and Minnesota. But I, my thing about it is this: it, it, depending on the on the, the, the three six and the four five seeds, we may have you know one of those five nine teams come through. But I don't see it happening. So we're basically looking at, at the rest of the rest of the season in the in the West is basically just jockeying for position and matchup come playoff time, right? Yes. Borrowing any any big trades. The, the trade deadline is February eighth. What's your nightmare scenario for – so we, we say the Warriors are probably going to face up with the, the Blazers or the Nuggets, one of those two? Probably, yeah. No problems there. Rockets are probably – we're hoping they play the Clippers in the seventh seed because we want to see that mini series play out on TV. And then the, a nightmare scenario for the Warriors, you're saying, would be having to face the Pelicans maybe Cause in – Because of Davis and Cousin size, yes. In round, in round two. Yes. 
So if they got past the Spurs, potentially. Well, well see, they, see if you if you're two, three, or six, seven, you're off, off the side of the bracket. Yeah, so they got to be in an odd. They got to be get up to five for that to happen. Yeah. Huh. Okay. So we'll have to keep our eye on that. Basically, that we'll keep our eye on the four, five, six to see where we're at. Pretty much, because that's kind of what's going to determine what happened with, with who. Pretty much, there. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my eye on it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to you if I see some movement that you didn't predict. I'm gonna make sure to let you know. Hey, listen, you gotta tighten your game up. As you know, on top three with Tindall, and the only thing on this show, I I'm a good at premonitions. <laughs> yeah, I'm well. good at prognosticating. No, no doubt. Well, folks, that's been your what's the conference review, midseason review here on the Boss Man Show. We out. Travis Williams, President and CEO of Academics and Athletic Consultant, focused on educating and empowering tomorrow's collegiate athletic leaders. My passion is for the education and genuine concern and care for today's student athlete. It's the centerpiece of my life's work. A college education, both in and out of the classroom, is a truly rewarding benefit. For more information on AAC, you can go to www.academicsandathletics.com consulting.com once again www.academicsandathleticsconsulting.com or you can follow me on Facebook at Academics and Athletic Consulting or Twitter at Coach T Wheel 24 or Instagram Travis L Williams 24 or you can call me at 404-542-607 once again, AAC is very proud to partner with J.R. McHenry of the Boss Man Radio Show, covering sports and entertainment across the country. Please tune in weekly for informative, entertaining, and expert analysis on today's sports and entertainment topics. Thank you.